get back It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the same And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Uh, Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, where entrepreneurs of six, seven, and eight-figure businesses come together live and in person every few months to solve their biggest business challenges and leave with lifelong friendships. Check out Rise25.com. It's run by myself and co-founder John Corcoran. It's application only. I have been waiting for a while. I'm very excited. Today's guest. Today we have Ian Stanley. He's a top direct response marketer. He's written email copy for large seven and eight figure companies with email lists topping 1.2 million subscribers. He's the founder of Fixed Water, F-I-X-T, and is on a mission to change people's lives by providing drinkable water no matter the condition. He even has disgusting videos where he's collected water with mud and waste and drinks it after being filtered by a fixed water pitcher. Ian, thanks for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited. I know I'm doing the right thing when I say dorm toilet and somebody goes, oh, that's cringeworthy. Yeah. It's demonstration. It's not, you know, limp, flaccid demonstration. <laughs> and, and so... You know, that's, but with, so that, that demo though is really strong. And then basically took the shower head and filled a glass of water from each and then put the drops in and you can see it turn yellow yeah. from the chlorine. And then you can see the other one not. And it's, it's just pretty undeniable proof yeah. and it's not boring. And it's something people actually like genuinely don't think about. This is the one thing where like whenever I talk to people about the shower head, in public, and I would like to the, like. I try not to. I'm not like you know shoving, drinking clean water down people's throats. No pun intended. Right. But uh, you know, but the shower head stuff. I'm like, yeah, that's. And they're like, what? That's crazy. Yeah. Where do I get one? Like, where do I? Get? And so for me, actually, um, in the transition, I didn't have a filter for a little bit, and I hate it now. I'll literally take like a two minute cold shower is the only thing I'll do. But when I would travel. Yeah. Um, I would forget sometimes and I'd wash my hair with hot water again. Right. 15 minutes later, it's yeah. itching. So it's, it's, uh, you know, that's, that's sort of remind me, you know, I have, um, a really good introduction for you of someone with like a completely different product, but very similar as far as the audience goes. So I'm writing that down. Um, Awesome. Yeah, this is actually really perfect. I'm and I when you said the shower head, I'm like, why would I want to filter my shower head? I mean, that's immediately what I thought of. Like, who cares and that it, me if I'm not drinking it? Yeah, and that's what's so interesting with that one is you know you've always got you can take a problem that people are already very aware of, and then just show them that it can be solved. And there are some things that people don't know, and then suddenly they know, and they're like, oh crap. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's the shower head one's fascinating. Like I had no idea, right, until I did the research, and then suddenly, it's one of those things where, and the reason I I like it a lot for selling as well is there's an immediate benefit. Within three or four days, a lot of people actually right. get this result with drinking clean water. If you start drinking a lot more water, you are going to feel better. Like I'm yet to find somebody who's like, oh, I'm drinking all this water and I just feel lethargic and shitty and I right. can't stand it. Um, but you know, removing contaminants is a slow it's peace of mind really and it's you know it's prevention more so than treatment yeah. um, and with the shower head there's actually an immediate benefit that people can feel and that makes a big difference in in you know being able to sell it as well as retention when people are like if i don't use this filter yeah. trap i get dry skin or an itchy head right. <laughs> you know before we started we talked about kind of the emotional mental exercise because you care about this and um, it takes longer than we think. So what's taken longer than you've thought so far? Because you've already done it once for the other company. So you expect, okay, in a year, 15 million, right? So what's taken longer than you thought? Yeah, so I think part of it is when when you are part of a team, there are, there are little pieces and little things getting done 
<clears throat> that you're not super aware of. Yeah. You may be aware of, but you underestimate when you've got four people full time. You know, what was interesting about what we did before is we had literally a team of essentially the owner buying traffic, me writing copy, and then we had a developer, um, like marketing, like developer type guy. And like, that was our marketing team. And so most people have, you know, multiple copywriters. They've got, you know, different writers. It's just different. You know, there's like, ten, you know, to do what we were doing, you know, you normally like 10, 10 people at least on a team. We had, it was really lean, which keeps it <clears throat> compact. But honestly, dev shit. God, the technical stuff first has always driven me mental. <laughs> um, but not having myself, not having a technical background, knowing that I'm not going to do it and learn it because it's a waste of my time. Um, <coughs> the uh, sort of the main um, the main thing, a lot of it's technical and just it's just these intangibles. Like for me, I became so obsessed with money is, you know, is, uh, you know, money is equated to speed <clears throat> and which is actually bullshit. It's, it's pace. It's speed is, you know, money's attracted to speed. It's really attracted to pace. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Yeah. Like the difference is speed is just a measure of, of actual, you know, forward or backward momentum. It's a, it's a rate at which you're moving. So pace is the time that you can maintain a velocity for it. Mm-hmm. And velocity is important because velocity dictates direction, right? I can go super fast in the wrong direction. Right. Doesn't matter. Right. But pace, but also how long can I sustain that speed for? If I can't sustain it, then it doesn't really matter. So I'd rather keep a consistent pace, a quick pace. Then, and that typically actually means, you know, within the business world, sprint, rest, sprint, rest. But, <clears throat> you know, I've become so obsessed with if I can't get it done because I've done VSLs so quickly and I've done everything way faster than, you know, most people do them. I'm like, all right, I can have a VSL up in two days. Like this business is going to be running in three weeks, two and a half months later, you know, you're still patching the pieces together and then it's finally going. And then your puppy goes to the hospital Mm. and then, you know, and, and you have all these intangibles that come up and you've got five other businesses and you've got all this stuff, but really a lot of it comes down to, technical pieces and then something like i never i like i never get sick i've been sick in like five years and of course i get like a scratchy throat and stuff which could be mental emotional stuff from like being scared of this project um but it's really just the fact that i'm waking up every four hours to feed a dog and probably drinking too too much alcohol and not enough sleep um but it's really frustrating because i can't film right now yeah I can't film and I can't do I can't redo the voiceovers because my voice sounds like shit, which is ironic because I'm talking about health right now and I probably sound unhealthy. Um, but, you know, that's part of transparency too, right? I'm what was say. the long, like for that two months, you said like I get this done in three weeks and it's two and a half months. Is it the longest, is the delay so part the of technical like, piece or what? Um, I would say, so there's pieces of sorting stuff out the manufacturer um, <clears throat> getting those pieces in place. Yeah. Uh, sometimes little things like names, like picking a name can take time. And we went through iterations of how do we pick the name. And then once we got on fixed water, yeah. like, okay, yeah, this is the one. Yeah. Um, but that can take a few days. That can take, you know, a week. Yeah. And it, cause it is important. Like what's interesting is having done this before, my goal is to build it slower than we want. Right. It's, it's like, I view it like a relationship. <clears throat> you just meet this beautiful girl. She's fantastic. And you want to move super quick and you want to spend every day together. And, you know, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. But the one thing I do know is <clears throat> no, no relationships ever gotten worse because you took it slower. Right. right. But they have gotten worse because you move too fast. So building a real infrastructure and having systems and ops in place yeah. for this business in advance is really yeah. important because right. we're treating this like a business that's going to be around for years and years and years, right. not like an offer or an opportunity right. that we're just going to run for a bit and make some money from. Yeah. This is something we want to run. So instead of trying to hit a million the first month, let's do a hundred K the first month. Let's, you know, then let's double that. And by January, let's be doing a million a month yeah. and let's, let, let's be okay with that. You know, we don't have to come out the gate and absolutely annihilate it. Um, But there are just little, like, 
I mean, we're using ClickFunnels at the moment and it drives me insane and I don't want to use it, but for the sake of speed, can it go? But then you have all these, a lot of it is sort of dev and technical stuff yeah. that just gets frustrating. Um, <coughs> what do you use and now? Then, like, so you use ClickFunnels, shopping cart stuff, is that in, uh, in we're, ClickFunnels? We're literally using, so that was the other thing. We're like, okay, payment processing. Like I've seen, like if you get if your merchant accounts get messed up, your whole business can get crippled, and it's not a problem until it's a problem, and then it's the only problem. Right. And when you're doing twenty, fifty, hundred grand a day, you know, even having a merchant account down for two hours right. can cost you five figures. Yeah. So in advance, because I've seen all the issues and I've seen all the failure points before, yeah. you have this new perspective of preparing, right. and that does take longer, but maybe it yeah. doesn't get broken in the end because of that. So. <clears throat> You know that's that's played a role, um, as well as just it's honestly even looking back, I'm like part of it's just intangible stuff that just like things just lag. People take longer. There's not always the same sense of urgency for everyone. Right. Um, and when you <clears throat> you kind of put you do put pressure on yourself for something like this because I've made it work before. You go, oh, I've got to crush it out of gate. You know, I'm gonna. You know, you, you've got this, and I actually care for once. Like business has come relatively easily for me up to this point, so I've never really cared that much. Like, I don't get bent out of shape about it. If something doesn't work, it doesn't work. Um, whatever, but this, I'm like, man, we're actually doing something real. We're getting to actually help people, right. and it's a topic I care about. It's my face. It's my, and it's my company, and I'm responsible for that. And so you start to, you know, build up different resistance points. Based on, um, it's the first business that scared me. Why? My business partner and I got off a call once. We were both like, "Did you get a little knot in your stomach from that one?" We were both like, "Yeah." What was it? It was. It's. It's a bit of fear. Like this is going to be. This is real. This is a real business. This is going to be. And I say real business. I mean, <clears throat> you know, the other businesses are real businesses, but this is something I care about. It's something that you know, plan to have in five years. It's a global it's impact. Can, yeah, it's something where we think we can get to 100 million a year. And so, but the thing is, to get there, you have to get <coughs> that first sale, yeah. which we've done now. But sort of slowly building up that, um, that scale and just focusing on sort of these little pieces. What yeah. scares me, I hate thinking small. You know, I have this board of all these, the big ideas, all the fun stuff but none of that gets done. <clears throat> like I don't get to do any of that until the one little thing is working. Right. So, and then there are little things like, oh, we're supposed to have traffic running from a media buyer um, last Thursday. And now because we can't put a flip in tracking pixel on the checkout page in ClickFunnels, we're now five days down the road mm. and we still haven't run it. And that's five days of testing time that could dramatically change the timeline of we're right. doing a lot of it right. those so just being okay with it yeah i want to know now i want to get i want to solve this shit i want to you know get this all you know yeah. churning but sometimes you just got to relax yeah. and and realize that life happens yeah i mean it's a lot of those little things like you said and some of those failure points like the processor or, or whatever it is what do you decide to use for that does ClickFunnels have a solution for a processor, or do you have to go to a separate company? Uh, we're using Stripe right now, Stripe and then we're getting bits for other merchant accounts. Yeah. Um, but you know, Stripe can just hold on to your money, and then uh, yeah. <clears throat> we're going to use another. We were originally supposed to, that actually one of the biggest holdups was we were essentially originally supposed to go through a very large digital marketplace that you. <clears throat> I mean, I could. I, don't know, I just won't say it. I guess, but that you would absolutely know of. Right. Um, and they came to us and they, they really want the offer because it's a legit product. They want to sell a high quality physical product. Right. Um, but what they came back from the VSL, like the amount of legal, like insanity that they went, like that they broke down was like, I'm, I'm not going to do that at least not right now. So that went from, that was what we were waiting on. Mm. And that was just two or three weeks of just waiting. Right. And then you get that back and it's like, okay, now I have to, you know, that's that's out of the question yeah. for right now. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's stuff like that where that suddenly that's three weeks just yeah. sort of wasted. So I interviewed the founder of Easy Pay Direct. I don't know if that's uh, something he, you looked at. I, I know Brad's one of okay. my close Did you, friends. Okay. I had him the other night. He, we actually filmed 
for his company here at this table I'm sitting at. So I know, I know Brad. He had some yeah. good thoughts on that, I'm sure. Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. that's why working with him is the re- and well, the experience we had with Merchant Accounts before is why I'm aware of it in, in advance because people don't think like, okay, we want to process a million in January. You've got to warm up your mids. You've got to get 100,000 through this company, you know, through this mid, through this one, through right. this one. And as a, when you're starting out, and even people who are quite experienced, if you've never had a merchant account issue, you're not thinking about it. Right. You're just, hey, we're on the internet. We can just collect money. Not necessarily. <laughs> you can do all the selling in the world. Right. You can be the best salesperson ever. But if you right. can't collect the actual money, it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. And if you wait for the problem to happen, again, a lot of moving pieces. <clears throat> so, you know, I want to go back. Um, I'm sure when you're growing up, you weren't like, I want to sell water pitchers and filters one day. So where did you grow up and, and when you were young, what did you want to do? Uh, I grew up partially in England and partially in California, which we probably should have said at the beginning because people are going to be sitting here just wondering what my accent is the whole time. Basically means I sound Australian. Um, <coughs> and uh, I, I, played, I played tennis in in college and, you did. and uh, yeah, I, <clears throat> I, my dad, you know, told people I was going to win Wimbledon from age five. Are you serious? Uh, yeah. So I, <clears throat> I played tennis from three years old till I try not to play much anymore, but my mom and dad are actually number one in the world for their age. Wow. Uh, right now. And so right now. They occasionally, yeah. So occasionally they'll pull me out to play like father, son, my dad and I, <clears throat> that's crazy I don't normally tell people I play tennis but yeah my dad and I played a national we were number two in the nation actually wow now and I, I never play um, anymore but <clears throat> I, I was an athlete basically I played sports um, and then uh, do you have video are there videos of you playing anywhere I don't know probably I, I want to put this on the page when we post <laughs> I wonder if there are any videos does your dad I, have any <laughs> It's filming tennis matches is, I, I'm sure there are videos that I, I have some on my phone, I'm sure from back when I was playing. Um, but, uh, so I basically played sports and then I actually, weirdly enough, I've heard something that basically what you were doing when you were like 10 um, is what you should do when you're older. Really? And I think that's, it's kind of, it's a broad statement I feel like because it's like, oh, you're, you're an accountant, we, we, we really going to be doing them. But then you hear those weird stories of kids who are like doing their parents' taxes at 10. Um <laughs> That was not me. But actually, yeah. I did some uh, acting stuff just like at school. And then I did, um, I was never like a theater kid or anything, but I, I did some plays and stuff. And then I would make videos with my friends. And then I just stopped for a long period of time. Right. And so ironic, kind of come back to just making funny videos. Because to me, that's just still about the most fun thing I can do. Because even if nobody laughs or if nobody likes them, in the moment that I'm filming, right. I typically have the most fun I could possibly have. <clears throat> and we die of laughter. So did that. I honestly, so in college. Do you play thought, tennis in college? Yeah, I played in college. Okay. Uh, and uh, and so that's that's what I basically went to school for was yeah. to tennis. And then uh, I hated it my whole life. I still hate it. Why? I hated it. It's it's it was never my thing. Was it's it a family. job? Like it's a job. Felt like tennis a job. Was a job. It was it that, like that from the beginning or just as you yeah. train more and more, it's like you became a job. Three years old, you know that much pressure and. And I was also a psychopath on the tennis court. What do you I'm mean? Very off the court, on the court, I made John McEnroe look like a teleter. <laughs> I was I mean, I've thrown rackets over fences, punched walls, cussed out refs. I've done, I had letters sent from the USTA. I was a nightmare. Um, if I kept calm, I would basically win. Um, but I was a nutcase. Uh, everybody in bad, they could, could win. Oh, uh, God. It's funny because off the court, <clears throat> I'd like never get angry. Um, it it brings out all the darkest parts of my soul. Interesting. Um, That's a good tweet of well, I made John Macron look like a Teletubby. I like that. <laughs> it's pretty accurate. Um, <clears throat> so I, uh, but then in college, I was actually going to join the military. That was all I cared about. Really? I was going to the special forces and then going to Delta. And that was like all I thought about, all I, I slept. Why military? About everything. Um <clears throat> I wanted to save lives. Like I basically, it started out for me that I wanted the training. I got basically, and I'm have to go here in a minute, unfortunately, but uh, <clears throat> I got mugged when I was 15 um, at knife point in England. And 
and I didn't think it was that big a deal at the time. But those two minutes basically changed everything from there on. Um, I didn't notice it until I was about 19 that I, that I realized that that was such a big moment. But that's when I started doing martial arts, <clears throat> learning self-defense, and uh, got big into violence training and stuff like that. Um, but I realized that those two minutes basically, it, when you're getting mugged at that age, especially when you're still forming your identity, um, what that person basically is doing is making you a slave. Hmm. For those moments, you're a slave. You have no control over anything. Um, and basically became obsessed with the idea that I would never be that person again who would be a victim. And a lot of people have traumatic experiences and then they become a victim. Yeah. Uh, chose not to, wow. whether it was consciously or not. Um, <clears throat> so I wanted the training to be able to kill anyone, basically, yeah. so that I could you go myself. Yeah. Because I feel there's nothing, there's no worse feeling I've ever had in my life. I hope to never have that bad a feeling ever again. Wow. Nobody should ever have to feel that. So after experiencing it, um, you become obsessed with, with not being that type of person. Yeah. Uh, so then the military was the logical sort of, I wanted all the training for special force stuff. And then I actually, I liked the mission of the green berets, which was basically, um, going in and training the people, um, to be able to fight their own wars <coughs> and learning languages and shit. And so that was my plan. And then, uh, I ended up basically not being able to join. I got medically disqualified and couldn't go in. And so I had to reevaluate my entire life. And, uh, and so that's, that's why the water thing I think is a big deal to me is I saw myself as somebody who had a predisposition to being able to deal with violence. And that was how I was going to save people's lives. Yeah. Um, and now ironically with the water stuff, I think I have the capacity to save a lot more lives. So I think that scares me a bit. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, much more fear of the light than fear of the dark. You know, the yeah. realization of your true potential yeah. is typically the scariest thing. Yeah. Ian, unbelievable. there's rarely a time I actually lose track of the time and don't stay to the time. So the full I apologize. Ten minutes ago, but, so for me to stay on through that. But thank you. This has been remarkable. I can go on and on um, about because it's just amazing stories. So... But we'll leave people with that, and everyone should check out fixedwater.com, F-I-X-T, water.com. Final words, Ian, what should, should we leave people with? Uh, filter your water. Filter your uh, water, yeah. I mean, if also, if any of the sort of just more fun stuff, me messing around, <coughs> making stupid videos, you can... Yeah, where should we follow. point people towards for that? I mean, I post them just on my personal Facebook page, Ian Stanley, and then I have a page, Stand Up Conversions. Um if if you so choose people seem to to get a kick out of those videos so there's another one like an 80 20 i have 80 20 email copy yeah either standupconversions.com or 80 20 email.com yeah. is where i teach yeah. marketing and teach sort of email yeah. copy and, and vsl writing and yeah. stuff like that yeah if you so, haven't gotten his your so, sense of humor by now the headline i think is how to become superhuman and kick being average square in the nuts using these little known life hacks Oh, is that what's on there? I think that's the old eighty twenty life oh, hack. That's where I used to. I used to just write total bullshit. Like I, I would write an email every day about whatever I was thinking. Um, but that's yes, how to kick average in the nuts. Right. Ian, thank you so much. Yeah, absolute thank you. pleasure. <clears throat> Sorry for my voice. You're awesome. Cool. Cheers, mate. Talk to you soon. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out.